Okay, YouTubers on Space Detectives today, we're going back over uh, the image that I went over in the previous video, which is this one, uh, the Mars Goddess statuette. And uh, we're going to be looking at some of the other rocks and things near this. And uh, there's some really cool stuff in here. But before we do that, I'm just going to do a quick look at some of the things that have been in the news. Um, there's this uh, story here. NASA Curiosity rover finds an ancient oasis on Mars. Jet Propulsion Laboratory. In fact, I've got a couple of stories up here. This one's probably better. I've got better pictures. Um, yeah, now, now I've been saying this for years, uh, that Gale Crater was an oasis. And this is the reason why so many animal remains can be found on the ground. Things like skulls and remains all over the place. Because... Um, this would have been one of the last places where water would have been, liquid water would have been available, probably, uh, as the um, atmosphere changed. So animals would have gone, would have come down into this crater and drank from it. Now what happens then, especially when you have different types of animals like herding animals and herds of probably small horse-like creatures, uh, things like, uh, you know, zebras and that kind of thing. You, we don't know exactly what animals were there. I have found many uh, remains, but it, it probably only represents a handful of, of the creatures that used to live there. Um, but uh, what would have happened is that some of the larger and more predatory creatures would have predated upon the smaller creatures, or even the larger ones, that were drinking. So there would have been a high concentration of dead creatures in the area, mainly because of that because it may have been one of the few places left being so low down uh, on Mars, being three miles down, it may have been one of the last places where liquid water was available in any, any quantity. And what tends to happen in, in uh, some places on Earth is you get, um, you get uh, very saline water. When the water dries out, it becomes very saline because obviously water does have salt in it although fresh water doesn't have very much, it does still have some. And when this dries out, uh, it becomes ever more saline. And what it tends to do then is, go, is turn toxic, and then it will poison the, the, the creatures that, um, that drink from it. This has been shown in places like Antarctica, where there were uh, freshwater ponds there, and they found animals that were drinking water from these ponds, and then they would, they would die of liver failure. Um, because the, the, the saline content was too high. And then their, and their bodies have been frozen for like six or 7,000 years and still have eyeballs and flesh on them and they still look pr practically no more than a week old. Um, so there's a place called Don Juan Pond, by the way, in, in Antarctica. Now, the, this is nor the Gorongoro Crater con Conservation Area, let's get, get my teeth in there, in Africa. Uh, in, uh, Tanzania. Now this is very similar to, to what uh, Gale Crater would have looked like. Let me show you a nice picture of it. Here we are. It's a really nice picture of it here. Now this is about 100 square miles. So it's approximately 10 by 10 uh, miles. Okay. It's, it's not a crater caused by a, a, an impact of an asteroid or, or comet. This was caused by a volcano that blew its top. So this is a volcano so we're quite high up here, and the thing just exploded and blew the, the whole top of the, the volcano or mountain completely off. And then we're left with this big crater, which is absolutely teeming with animals and life. It's got, you can see the oasis there. Let's zoom in a bit. It's a big image, this. You can see the oasis there. And uh, you've got trees around the edge. There's trees in the bottom as well. But this is right in the cent central Africa. And this is what Gale Crater would have looked like, although much smaller. This is only a fraction of the size. Gale Crater um, is 150 kilometres. That's about 90 miles across. So it's about, not quite, but almost 10 times the size of this. So it's very large, Gale Crater. But this is kind of what it would have looked like. And uh, you've got the, the rim of the crater here. But of course, Gale Crater has a mountain in the middle of it. Now, how does that work? Uh, how does a mountain form in the middle of a crater? 
no one's really been able to adequately uh, say how that happened. Uh, although NASA do have some models on their on their page here of how they think uh, it it happened, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't quite work because the, the Mount Sharp in Gale Crater is actually taller than the edges of the crater, and they think it was made by sediment. Uh, yeah, okay. So how's it taller than the edges of the crater? Hmm. Mm. It doesn't really. They've never really been able to adequately explain that. So I'll, I'll put links to these pages here for you to read up. I won't read through all this now because I want to get on with the other stuff that I'm going to show. Uh, so there's a couple of stories on that there about the Oasis. And incidentally, if you go back through my old videos, there's this one. This is the Mars Iguana, Mars Amazing Iguana um, video I did back in 2013. And uh, this is the, my first ever viral video, Mars video, and it shows a tortoise. It's a dead rat here or a hamster or something, the tortoise here. Now these are over zoom. This is a classic example of what not to do with uh, Mars images. Don't get in too close. Now you can see what that is, but these are too close. I've gone in too close to it and the, the images are a bit fuzzy. If I just stepped back a bit with these images, like I did with this one, then it would have been much better. Uh, this is the one of the famous images that you'll see on lots of uh, programs about about Mars, or documentaries I should say, uh, and uh, this one went viral, but the, the story was nicked by uh, Scott Waring from, um, from uh, UFO Sightings Daily, and he claimed that he found it, but that was six months after I'd already published it and it had gone viral. It already had done most of these views, it did about 50,000 views before he even uh, published it many months later, about six or seven months later. So there we are. Uh, but the main reason for showing this is not that, but uh, to show you this. Now, this was 2013, right? Now, this isn't my first video, but it's one of my early, very early videos. I started in March of that year, and this is May. So I, there was a couple of months before that. And uh, I wrote this. I'm not going to read it all out. I stuck this under all my videos. This is a thing I wrote. And in fact, I think I put it on my, some of my websites as well. There is comprehensive evidence for life on Mars if you know where and how to look for it. I and many other armchair explorers are finding everything from animals to fossils, bones, skulls, and even carved or manufactured objects. They can be found in some of these images beamed down from the Mars rover Curiosity. Unfortunately, NASA seem to be over-compressing most of the images that are free to download from their website, but some of the large panoramic TIFF files are of good quality and are 200 dpi, dots per inch. Uh, that should be P PPI, pixels per inch, actually. So that's uh, wrong. <laughs> These are the ones to go for. Um, the animals in the main are dead and look freeze-dried in Gale Crater, mummified in the extreme cold nights that go down to about minus 60, but the days are hot up to... 70 degrees or more. Now that's in the summer, of course. In the winter, it's a different story, much colder. It goes down to about 100, minus 180 at night there. Um, okay, there are, there are very conflicting views about the temperatures on Mars, mainly caused by people using averages, which are quite misleading. As for the air on Mars, we are told that there is only 0.5% oxygen. Personally, I think more like 5% in some areas unless the surviving creatures have adapted to breathe CO2 or hydrogen, which could be the case. Uh, this may explain why most of the living creatures found so far are small rodents and reptiles. They can survive on very low quality air and can burrow to avoid freezing. And uh, it, it does mention here um, an oasis. There, yeah, here we are. I won't read all this, I'll just read this bit. Uh, any surviving creatures from the cataclysm would have congregated there, an oasis. Right, so I figured out that this was an oasis in 2012. So why has it taken NASA so long when I'd, I'd already figured this out? I figured it out in 2012, and I, and I first wrote that in, in around Christmas 2012, and then published that, what I just read you, um, 
on my website and then in my videos in 2000, early 2013. Right, so if I figured that out six or seven years ago, after looking at the first probably 30 sets of images that came down, I figured that out straight away. Why is it taking them six or so years for them to, to actually come out with this? Are they being restricted? Are NASA only being allowed to tell us certain things years after they've discovered them? Because that's what it seems like to me. I'm six years ahead of NASA on this, and I've been six years and many years ahead of them on lots of other things. And other researchers as well out there who've been doing videos similar to mine have also come to similar conclusions and have said that they've spotted water in Gale Crater running off the rocks and stuff like that. Um, and it can, be seen, it can be seen in many images. And of course, they're, they're, this also gives us an insight into what NASA are allowed to tell us. Life on Mars may be found in two years, but the world isn't prepared, says NASA chief. This is a story that's been doing around for about a week now. And I put this up on the Mars Magazine page the other day. And uh, this, this is all over the press. All the press have put this in as a, one of their main science stories this week. And uh, are basically, that he's basically saying in this that we're not, we're not ready to be told that there is alien life on Mars. And what, what they will probably do, in fact, I knew this a couple of years ago. They said then that they probably won't announce or they're unlikely to announce Mars until the new Mars rovers get there with the DNA testing gear on board. So now, now I figured this out a long time ago. And in fact, um, in, my, in that piece that I wrote under this video here, that's uh, under all my early videos and stuff, um, it also goes into the fact that, that, that they're going to send a DNA testing kit on the new, new rover when it goes up there. It does say in here somewhere. Yeah, here we are. Even though NASA have mentioned water and possible life on Mars, they maintain that it died out millions of years ago. It's, it's, it's in fact billions, they say. On the other hand, they are taking a DNA lab on the next rover. DNA could only last about a million years. So they must think otherwise. You have to read between the lines. They are a military organization after all. Well, there we are. So they must think that there is surviving DNA on some of these um, things like I found, and not just microbes in the rocks that might contain DNA. There's dead creatures, freeze-dried remains, mummified people, skulls, and you can extract DNA from teeth in skulls, especially uh, not that easily, but you need to extract um, material from inside the teeth to get the DNA from usually a molar or something like that. And there are creatures all over the place. I, and I've found hundreds of skulls, and there are even mummified people and uh, other creatures. So I'd worked all this out years ago. So basically they must, have made, they must have known this as well years ago, but they just haven't bothered to tell us because they don't think we're ready for it. But now they're actually coming out and saying, we want to tell you, but we don't think you're ready to be told. This is basically the, the premise of what they're saying. So I'll let you read up on that. That was interesting. This is the, the figurine here, which I showed the other day, which is this thing. Okay, that's here. That's been enlarged, obviously. And we have the figurine here. Now, a lot of people said that those face details aren't in the image. Well, yes, they are. All you've got to do is sharpen it, you know. Uh, that's raw image there. You can actually see just about make out. Some of these face details, so there's like a little nose and a mouth and some eyes there. Uh, it's very vague, yes, but so what? <laughs> so what? So a lot of people are saying, oh, that's not there, you're, you're drawing it in. No, look, when you sharpen it, what happens? You can see those facial details come out and uh, the other details. Um, this, is, this is a good way of actually enhancing images. If you want just to find what's in an image, of course, what I've done here is I've stitched the images together and then uh, enlarged it, okay? What enlarging does, it gets rid of the compression artifacts and uh, it actually smooths the image out slightly. But lots of other people have said in the comments that they've seen there, there is possibly another torso here. And I tend to agree that that might be a male torso next to the female one there. But there's not enough of it left to determine exactly what we're looking at okay 
that's the problem. Let's get rid of those things I just did. But there is something here. And other people have said there might there's something they can see down here as well. There's loads of stuff in here. Um, what I'll do, I'll put some more clips of this in at the end and try and enlarge it a bit more and try and sharpen it up more because there's some crazy stuff in here. But a lot of this is just random. But you have a mixture of random material plus intelligently made objects mixed together. And sometimes it's hard to tell one from the other. But you can see the facial detail there when you sharpen it. See, look, simple as that. And uh, you can see the breast detail there. And obviously the legs are pretty clear and the broken arm, the, the arm that's shattered into pieces there. So it's all there, and that part of the fit, the hand coming round. Unfortunately, the other arm's missing, so, but it's all there. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to show you today is this over here. Now, some people did mention this, but I'd already, I've already done the enhancements to this in my folder, this thing here. Let's show you that now, because I'd already done this the other day, and uh, this is part two, I'm saving this for part two. So let's find the right image to look at, which is uh, this one. Here we are. Now, this is really weird, as many of these things are. This looks like a mummified person, just here. And in the enhancement, let's go in a bit closer. You can see a head, an eye here, a nose, mouth, a kind of pointed this looks like a garden gnome. Absolutely insane. It's got a pointed head or hat. You can see the ear there. Shoulder. Arm coming round. There's the hand just here. Arm comes up like that. That's the shoulder blade there. Uh, the back is hunched over. His ass is round there somewhere. And the leg coming down here to about here. There's the foot, what looks like the foot. But there's also something rather interesting below here, which looks like part of something as well. And you can see all that in the raw image, it's all there. It's just a bit vague and a bit blurry. So you have to sharpen it like I've done. You can see where I've sharpened this. I've carefully sharpened it. But what was also weird about this was the thing behind it, which is uh, very odd indeed. What this represents, I'm not really sure. It seems to represent some kind of creature. This is a head. You can see where I sharpened it with teeth. One, two, three, four. There's four or five teeth there. In fact, there's another one there. And that's in the raw image. When you zoom in, look at the raw image. Look really carefully. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. There's six teeth along there. It's there. You've just got to look slowly and carefully. Tilt your screen a little bit if you have to. But of course, if you brighten this up and, and up the contrast, they, they stick out. That's all you've got to do. Um, so there we are. And this thing you can see in the raw image there pretty well. Now let's look at it. Let's look at it on here. Because I've got this image up. Now, this has been enlarged to a point. But it's so vague. But you can see the hand, the arm. There's the arm coming up. There's the face, teeth. Top of the head, ear, just there. Let's make this a bit smaller. So sometimes using a sharpen tool, you can just go over things just to highlight what you're trying to see, to see what's actually there. And we've got this rather strange angle there. This is the foot, knee just here, leg coming up here, right? There's the ass there, back, shoulder, the arm coming down here. Now that's a little bit hard there. Soften that a bit. Now I wouldn't actually use this as a finished image, but it's, it, using the sharpened brush is one way to, to bring out detail without too much fuss, just to help you see what's, what shape it is. But you can see that this is where the hand is here, and it's holding something. Just there. Almost as if, let's undo all that, Almost as if this thing is like a little person on a bike or, or, on a, or holding some kind of machinery or doing something. It, what it reminds me of is, is those little kind of figures you get in shop doorways, like at a butcher's shop or um, 
in the UK, we used to have these shops. I don't know if you've had these in where, where you come from in America or in Europe or wherever, uh, where you sort of go past and they'd have like a, a, a um, what do you call it, an animated figurine, like a bit, sort of like a little miniature person with a little, with a meat cleaver outside, you know, animated as if it's cutting meat or something. And there, was an, there used to be another one over the road um, of, of a cobbler banging a shoe as well. So th these would be like a, a little figure you get outside a shop or in the shop window to attract people into the shop, of course. Um, I know that sounds random, but that, that's the kind of size we're looking at. This is tiny, right? This is probably only, let's zoom out, this is probably only four, four inches, maybe five, could be more. It's about the same scale as the figurine over here. You've got the figurine here, that's about four inches. And this is probably about the same. Uh, that's a little bit further away, but not a lot in it. So this is really small. Could it actually be a person? Could be. I'm not going to rule it out. I mean, other small people have been found mummified in the area. Not far from here. Uh, the mummified couple was Sol 36, so that's only... That's only 40, that's only 50 odd days earlier than this. Okay, so the mummified couple isn't far from here, so this could actually be a person that's mummified in, in, the, in the mud and clay, has fallen into the into the clay and mud and, and solidified and dried out. Who knows? But it does seem to me that if I point it out here, you've got the hand here and there's something coming down here. You can see these lines um, just here. You see it? Something like that. Like some kind of implement or tool or something. Now, not only that, we have this thing here, which looks like an arm of some kind of bit of machinery, or a lever or something, or perhaps a weapon even. Okay, the handle. And I have found weapons with handles in this area as well, but, but not this small. Um, so there we are, let me, let me just draw around that. Just to, it's a bit hard to get your head around this, because it's pretty vague, but there's the arm, there's the hand, the arm comes up to there, this is the shoulder, there's this object on the shoulder, almost like a bit of armour, which is rather strange. Uh, the back comes down here, torso, butt here, now there's some sort of baggy trouser material going on here, like that. And then there's this rather weird angular bit, but th this looks a bit like a leg with a boot or something going on there. And then we have this rather weird thing at the bottom, which looks a bit like a, a weapon or, or implement of some sort, like a like a, a blade with a, with a long knife. Really odd. And then the head obviously comes up like this to a point, comes down like that, the nose here, hang on. Sorry about this, it's a bit, my mouse is playing up today with something. Some days it just doesn't work so well. There's the eye, I zoom in a bit. And this is a mouth. In a grimace, in quite a, an extreme grimace kind of uh, expression. Very odd indeed. And there seems to be something coming down here, you can see it. It's there, see? Is, uh, which may be attached to this thing, which is really hard to make out what it is. I don't know what that is. So if any of you have got any ideas what this could be, please leave a comment, because I'm, I'm struggling a bit with this. And the thing behind it is really weird. If, let me illustrate that for you. It comes around like that. That's the head. I think this is where an eye would be. And you've got teeth here. You see the teeth? One, I've really sharpened that, probably over-sharpened it slightly. You've got one there, 
another one there, got another one there, another one there, another one there, okay? There you are. Those are definitely there, you can see them in a raw image, they're just a bit vague. And this thing has got something like an arm or something coming out here. Very strange, I don't know what that is, and there's a back to it, and the head comes up to there like that. It's almost like a salamander or something. Really weird. Don't really know what that is. I don't know what it represents. It may represent a carving of some kind of creature. I, I think the chances are that, uh, that um, a person mummified next to a salamander-type, lizard-type thing is pretty slim. So I, I would say this may also be some kind of carving, but it might not be. Um, but this person, or whatever, it, this little gnome-type little dude seems to be holding something just here or riding on something perhaps so let's have a look at the larger image and see if we can see around it if there's anything that helps give that away so you can see those quite clearly you can see those lines there coming down but they're going behind this thing here so this may not be related at all but this is weird 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 stuff so there we are so answers on a postcard with that one guys could do with a little bit of help on that not really sure what to make out of it and of course like i said earlier um there are loads of uh let's undo that sharpening there there are loads of weird shapes in here but of course we are getting into the realms of pareidolia here when you start seeing little faces in everything so you've got to draw the line somewhere but you know there are lots of weird details here and i think this might be something this thing here that's weird the way it sort of sticks out like that and it's kind of joined to that bit so that could represent some kind of creature or something who knows now of course one thing you have to bear in mind is that, that a lot of these things are heavily damaged and eroded but also a lot of the creatures on mars may be so unrecognizable to us that we're completely missing them you know some of these things may represent animals and creatures that we've never seen the like of i mean the chances are that most of their animals and creatures will have some similarities to ours in fact the ones that i've uncovered and discovered do uh, but some of them don't some of them are a kind of in between species that are kind of a mixture and some of them look like some weird hybrids that, that uh, don't make a lot of sense to us. So that has to be taken into account when looking at these images. So I'd already worked out that, that there was an oasis here from the specimens that I found. And uh, some of the fossils and stuff have got, have got lots of mixed creatures in them. Some of the rocks I found have got like dead rodents and sea creatures like lobsters all kind of mixed up together. Um, I'll see if I can find that video for you. So I knew that there must have been some kind of cataclysm that washed them into the area. Because why would you get an, uh, such different species in the same uh, strata and, and, and uh, solidified clay? They must have been thrown together, you know. So you're, t you're talking marine crustaceans mixed with, with land mammals or land creatures. So there we are I've worked it all out in 2012 2013 and that's it I'm now announcing it so am I that far ahead of them probably not they're basically I think being told not to tell us things until six years after they've discovered them or, or proved them already and they're being restricted and censored like like a, some organizations are trying to do to me so there we are thanks for watching See you soon.